I squared C is an acronym for Inter Integrated Circuit Communications. Some refer to it as IIC or I2C. Philips Semiconductor, now NXP, invented I squared C in 1982. NXP currently leads the market with over 1,500 part numbers that our customers are using across the spectrum of applications and major standards. NXP conceived of I squared C to provide simple, robust, inexpensive, and easy to use communications between a chain of peripheral devices and a control processor. The first 100 kilohertz application connected integrated circuits in a television. Today, the standard supports up to one megahertz and I squared C is the most widely used serial bus across every type of application, from smartphones to instruments, to industrial equipment, to aerospace, to automotive, and so on. It really is easy to use. Virtually all microcontrollers include at least one I squared C connection. And all sensors use I squared C as the interface of choice. Let's look at the basics. The physical concept is a two wire bus. With the I squared C protocol, all the peripherals are simply connected in parallel to the same two wire bus, expandable up to 127 devices. Board layout is quite easy, using only two valuable pins for the bus connection. And software libraries are readily available to manage the bus. The I squared C protocol is uncomplicated and robust in operation because the protocol verifies that every byte sent is received correctly. And built-in arbitration eliminates bus conflicts. How this works is that the protocol consists of a number of 8-bit words and a handshake signal, ACK to acknowledge the correct receipt of data. The protocol sends out an address byte and a read-write bit to select the peripheral with which the micro wishes to communicate. And ACK signals constantly ensure correct and reliable data communication between the designated devices. I want to emphasize that ACK is a key benefit that some other serial communication schemes do not provide. Send-receive data flows in both directions. The master generates the clock and initiates communication with the slave. The slave receives the clock and responds when addressed by the master. To transmit, the master sends a start bit followed by the seven bit address of the slave with which it wishes to communicate, followed by a write bit. The slave will respond with an act bit for that address. The master then continues in write mode per the bit it sent. And the slave continues in the complementary mode. Both master and slave use ACK after every byte to confirm that the correct device is present and to verify correctly received data, providing a very robust transmit-receive architecture. A key to flexibility is that because both lines are an open drain design, simple pull-up resistors are used to control transitions from high and low states and provide flow control and arbitration mechanisms. Learn more in the Easy I2C video series from NXP.